Hey, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the link token from Chainlink. I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before investing money into crypto. Now, if you haven't seen the previous link update that I did a couple of days ago, make sure to check that out before watching this one. The link is going to be in the top right hand corner of the video. Also, I want to mention the two donation links down below in the description. You can support Ukraine by donating to the Ukrainian refugees and to Ukraine's military. So thank you all for understanding and thank you all for donating. And real quick, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon. Uh, we do have five different tiers. You get exclusive content on a daily basis. Sometimes I miss a day or two, but usually I try to upload on a daily basis. Here we have low cap gem calls, trade alerts, TA requests, video requests. As you can see, almost 500 posts out already and you'll get access to all of them as soon as you join. So jumping into the daily chart for Chainlink right now, I want to zoom out a little bit over here and you can see that we were in this uh, in this channel down pattern, as you can see And here, we lost it as support. And right now we broke through it once again and potentially uh, with the upcoming pump, we could go all the way up here and uh, test twelve and a half dollars now potentially. Uh, but we do have a couple of resistance levels right now that I do want to talk about. So let's just zoom in. And like I said, this is the daily chart. So first of all, here, the white trend lines represent a falling wedge that we were in. We had a nice tightening over here, a nice squeeze. We did break to the upside. Uh, we back tested the support and then we continued on. And the target from this pattern was over here at seven dollars and well basically almost eight dollars so the target was met precisely over here but that wasn't the end of the pump we even managed to break through the 20 ma which is a key resistance area and right now we are getting rejected from the 55 ema which is the red line and keep in mind we broke through the blue trend line over here so potentially the first level of support that you want to look for is the blue trend line now, also, we do have an orange trend line over here. Now, if I extend it just a little bit so it's easier for you to see, as you can see, we had rejections over here, over here, over here, over here. So four rejections on the fifth time, on the fifth attempt, we broke through. And right now we could come back and back test the orange line as support. That is always possible. And we did get some news regarding staking because staking is coming this year for Chainlink. That's why I'm dollar cost averaging into this project. You get all my trade alerts on um, on my Patreon, obviously. And right now we're looking for a nice little swing trade. I did tell my patrons that I would take some profits if we would get overbought on the four hourly chart based on the relative strength index. So like I said, you can look for support on the orange trend line, but I do think that we are going to come back down to the 20 EMA at the very least. And, you know, you can always expect Bitcoin to dump. You always get a capitulation before you start reversing. So you usually have um, some sort of a reversal pattern, right? For Bitcoin, you potentially have a relief rally. Then you come back down, you have the capitulation, then you have the V-shape recovery, and that's when you start recovering to the upside now the v-shape recovery is what i'm looking for on bitcoin uh, we don't know if that's going to happen it doesn't have to happen like that but that's just something that i'm targeting because it does happen pretty much all the time and that's you know that's kind of your bottom that that you could be looking at but we have the orange trend line we have the 20 ema over here sitting at around about eight dollars so I would say $8 is a good dollar cost averaging area because we could very well backtest this as support and then continue on because we have seen Chainlink do well in bear markets before and this could be no difference, right? We could potentially just start an uptrend from here and continue on because right now we have a low, we have a high, we have a higher low, we have a higher high. Potentially we could print a higher low and continue on with the uptrend. Now, I do want to show you the daily RSI over here. And wow, it is a little bit messy. I do apologize. But you can see, if you pay attention, you can see that it's really simple what we have over here. So the white trend line over here is a support trend line that we've held multiple times for a uh, for actually four months. 
Then we lost it over here, backtested as resistance. We did that twice. And then we just broke through it over here. Now, the yellow trend lines over here represent a rising wedge that we were in. So you got closer to the apex and here you did break to the upside. And the same thing that it could be said about the orange trend line. We had one back test of resistance. We had a second one over here. Then you came back down and now you broke through it. So I would be looking for support for the RSI on the yellow trend line over here below on the white trend line as well and on the orange trend line. So those could be your major support zones. Now, as for resistance on the daily chart, as you can see here, we did run into this level two times previously, once January, uh, once in April. And right now we could potentially do the same thing in June and we could come back down into this uh, white support trend line. Because overall, if you take a look at the white patterns over here, uh, at the white pattern, let me just remove the colored trend lines for a second. So as you can see, this is a ascending, this is an ascending triangle over here, basically. And an ascending triangle is a bullish pattern because you usually get a break to the upside from this pattern. But here we did lose the support of the pattern for a little while. But right now we came back into it. So potentially we could be back in the pattern. Hopefully we do not lose the white trend line, although that is possible with the upcoming Bitcoin capitulation that I'm targeting personally. And yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. So that's for the daily chart. Now, I do want to switch over to the four hourly chart over on Binance's website. Now, switching over to the four hourly chart, we do have a resistance trend line here at $12.65. As you can see, this area was tested as support multiple times over here, over here, over here. We did go below it over here, but we had a V-shaped recovery that was in February this year. And... I do potentially think that if we continue with this pump, we could run into this trend line and back test it as resistance right before coming back down and, you know, eventually potentially even printing a lower low here because you're still going to be printing a lower high even if you get to the $12.65 mark because our major resistance over here is at $18, uh, $18 and, and, and 30, 40 cents. So that's the major resistance that we need to break through in order for us to flip bullish because you break resistance in order to have targets to the upside. Right now, on a short-term scale over here, uh, this little fractal, uh, we have our swing low here in May. We have a swing high May 15th. Okay, so we retraced to the 0 0.5, then to the 0 0.382, then the 0 0.5 once again. And right now, you're eyeballing the 1.618 Fib retracement over here at $10 basically. So $10 is going to be your target here. And usually once you break the first fib level, as always, you can target the 1.618 at the very least. You could get overextended to the second fib, or like I said, you could target the uh, yellow resistance trend line. But to be more conservative, the 1.618 would be a good take profit zone in my opinion, because from the bottom over here of this move, this would be a very nice 81% trade in my opinion. Now, I would look for support at $8 here because this is our resistance over here and our swing high that we printed. Then we had a second touch over here of this level and potentially we just broke through it. You can come back down and you can uh, target that. Now, the 55 EMA on the four hourly chart would be something that I would be targeting, but I do envision us going back down here and at least coming back down to the golden ratio with the uh, EMAs printing a bearish cross which is when the 20 crosses below the 55. So yeah, this is something that I'm targeting. Uh, we got a pretty good uh, pump here for link, but I do think this is just because of the staking news. And I don't know, maybe we start pumping from here even further. But like I said, unless we break $18, I'm going to be looking for more downside potential. And if you want to know what, I th what I'm targeting for as the bottom, then uh, it's really simple. What you do is you set yourself a Fib retracement. But so as you can see, uh, with the uh, swing high over here and the swing low over here, you get the 1.618 at $6.85. Okay, and we just landed on the zone. So uh, boom, target met. That's great, right? And you're starting to retrace. 
but you could start running into the 1.272 as resistance at $9.91. Then you have the $13.24 resistance because you did bounce from this zone multiple times and you could just print a lower high, come back down at least to where you came from, right? So you're going to have a retracement at least to the 1.618. And after that, if we see a deeper correction for Bitcoin, we could even come back down to the second Fib level here at $4.56. So that's just what I'm looking at. Not a financial advisor by any means, but I do think we're going to have more buying opportunities for Chainlink. Even at these prices, it's a very cheap in my opinion. I'm looking at 100 plus for chain link before I think about uh, taking profits. But you can see that we have been in the overbought multiple times. And right now uh, we are starting to come back down on the stock RSI as well as the relative strength index just a little bit. But I would wait until you get into the oversold here, just like it did over here back in uh, back on May 26th. So that is pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. I do post technical analysis in there as well, as well as some updates. If I missed out anything on the charts, please let me know down below in the comment section. I'm going to catch you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.